Hey, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. President Bola Tinubu has invoked the principle of presidential prerogative of mercy by approving the partial waiver of the no work, no pay order that was instituted against members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities in federal universities following the commencement of their eight month industrial action on February 14, 2022, before its suspension on October 17, 2022. President Tinubu's approval of the partial waiver of the no work, no pay order on ASU will allow for the previously striking members of ASU to receive four months of salary accruals out of the eight months of salary, which was retailed during the eight month industrial action undertaken by the union. Joining us on the morning show to discuss this waiver by President Tinubu is Dr. Aminu Abdullahi Shiaku, the National Liaison Officer of the Congress of the Nigerian University Academics. Good morning. You're welcome to The Morning Show. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I know that you are the National Liaison Officer of KONOA, uh, and KONOA came out of the uh, issues that ASU had with the federal government. Uh, but before we discuss that, we, before we add it to the discussion, uh, let's have your take on uh, the decision of President Bola Metinubu uh, to invoke the prerogative of mercy uh, by waiving half of the outstanding uh, salaries uh, owed to ASU members. Uh, is it something that is uh, uh, welcoming you know, to you? Is it something that um, KONWA as an organization approves i know that asu uh has picked holes in the decision of the president saying that he won't take a partial uh waiver uh but for konwa how will you uh describe what the president has done is it satisfactory or will you rather have the lecturers ask for more uh thank you very much for us in the congress of university academics not Congress of Nigerian University Academics. Uh, this uh, uh, presidential waiver of, uh, I mean, partial waiver of the backlog of withheld salaries of the striking uh, members in the university system. Actually, we in our own group, we have nothing to do with it because uh, it does not uh, concern us. And whether it's a good thing or not, it's well within the right of Mr. President to exercise his, uh, his powers to waive uh, the no work, no pay uh, that was uh, meted on the striking uh, lecturers. So whether those uh, uh, group concerned welcome it or not uh, is a different thing for us in the union. All right. So now, can you just clarify with us, what is the union asking for at this moment now? Uh, and also what needs to be done for the full implementation, you know, of the terms which were agreed on with the ASU during, you know, the deliberations um, with the federal government of Nigeria? I, I just want to know your, uh, from KONWA what, what, what the demands are at this point. You see, the traditional demands uh, have always been known by Nigerians. It is a well-known uh, thing that Nigerian university lecturers have one of the most uh, lowest salaries in the country. And this salary have not been uh, reviewed over the last 10 years or so. So that is fundamentally one of the major uh, issue within the system. However, there are other uh, supporting issues as well, issues of university revitalization, uh, because we, we all know that most of the infrastructure within the universities uh, are not uh, really uh, good, and so they need to be updated. And some other issues also uh, that unions have been clamoring for over the years is the issue of university autonomy. And that too is debatable. 
Uh, some people are saying that university autonomy must not include financial autonomy. And some section of the country believe that autonomy should be uh, 100%, meaning autonomy should be granted to universities to appoint vice chancellors to run their administrative uh, units and even generate funding uh, for the system. So there are a range of issues, but for us in Konwa, we do not really believe that some of those issues are quite germane, that uh, have the tendency to hamper the progress of the system. For us, the number one issue is the welfare of, of our members. We believe the Nigerian universities lecturers should be paid more than what they are being paid. All other issues for us remain secondary. And if we see increased funding in the system, we like it. If university autonomy is going to resolve the problems of uh, perennial strikes in the system, so be it. If the newly introduced student loan system because the student bodies themselves have welcomed it, if that is going to address some of the issues of arrest and some of the issues of lack of funding within the system, especially targeted for students to pay tuition fees, uh, to pay uh, certain maintenance fees, we also are on board with this. But fundamentally, our issue is welfare for our members. Let that be improved. All right, Dr. Isiaku, uh, just kindly first clarify for me if um, uh, the waiver that was granted uh, by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, if any of your members uh, will be uh, beneficiaries. Uh, the reason why I'm asking is that people say that uh, before Kunwa uh, came on board, uh, some of your members were initially part of ASU. So do we have a situation whereby there, there's a carryover of ex ASU members, big Conrad members now, and who uh, are being owed an uh, eight month salary. And secondly, uh, you sound like it is the problem of ASU, uh, whether they get you know, the waiver or not, uh, let them deal with it. I'd like to ask you, um, what is the relationship uh, between ASU and Konwa at this point? And are there areas where uh, you agree? Are there areas of collaborations, of convergence, or it's a matter of we're two different entities uh, let each carry his own cross? What is the situation between you both? Okay, fundamentally we are two different entities between uh, Congress of University Academics and Academic Staff Union of Universities. We are two different bodies and uh, but we are equal in the eyes of the law uh, and as far as uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria is concerned, because both of us represent uh, the interest of Nigerian university lecturers. So uh, we seem to be uh, converging, if you like, uh, on fundamentally the issue of uh, welfare and also the issue of uh, more funding and revitalization within the universities including the backlog of unpaid, uh, what we call end academic allowance. So we, sum, we seem to have a convergence on these issues. However, we differ fundamentally on the approach. We believe that the traditional approach by the other union uh, did not uh, yield any result. Normally when uh, unions go on strike, government will uh, invoke certain negotiation uh, process, at the end of the day, a token amount will be released to uh, striking members. They go back, share that, and then come back again to embark on another round of strike because certain MOUs will not be honored by government. So we believe that cycle of strike, MOU, MOA, non-implementation, back to strike, and all that is killing the system, is destroying the lives of our students, is uh, dashing the hopes of Nigerian parents that need to see their, their children uh, graduate from our universities. And we believe 
our universities as, as they are have a lot to do in terms of being able to graduate good and quality graduates. However, what is missing is motivation, uh, lack of motivation within the ranks of university lecturers. So we have this convergence, but we differ fundamentally on approach. We do not believe in strikes. We really do not believe strikes uh, brings anything good more than the destruction that it brings. So if we can iron out our differences with our employer, the federal government, amicably, using other innovative techniques of engagement and even in involving other stakeholders that traditionally have not been involved within negotiations, and also involving and dealing more with the National Assembly that actually have a lot of powers to appropriate funds uh, within the budget. We can have a difference uh, in the outcome of our negotiations. And uh, uh, going to your first question uh, that says, uh, if within our ranks we have uh, carryover members of, of ASU, I can tell you that every day the ranks of Konwa uh, used to increase because uh, we used to have many members that are crossing over uh, into, into our ranks. And I want you to understand that we are not employed by the federal government to do unionism on campuses. We are not employed by government as union members. We are staff. We are civil servants teaching in the Nigerian universities. So our rights are not being determined by our affiliation to unions or our interests uh, within one union or the other. Our rights are protected by our fundamental rights enshrined in the Constitution that says that our services should be rewarded, are rewarded uh, uh, with, uh, with dignity. So uh, we believe that government knows who members of CONWA are. Also government knows members of other unions within the system. So and government uh, can approach uh, resolving issues, uh, payment of uh, partial amnesty uh, uh, salaries to striking members and also paying our members in full because we believe we have nothing to do with the uh, announcement on behalf of Mr. President uh, brought out by Chief Ajuri Gilale that says that uh, academic staff uh, union members will be paid four months salary. We have nothing to do with it. We are calling on our members nationwide uh, to remain calm because we are pursuing their interest of reclaiming their withheld salaries of seven and a half months in total. So we believe uh, our members will be paid in full in the due course of time. All right. I mean, thank you for breaking all of those down. I understand that you have said, uh, Kunwa, you guys dif and ASU, you differ fundamentally. My question to you is, you've talked about negotiation. Absolutely. I'd like to know what would happen in the event that negotiations fail, because this is what ASU has been talking about. Like you mentioned, it's seven and a half months old salary. You also spoke about university autonomy. I'd like to know, you know, what form of autonomy uh, that Kona would like to see, um, you know, even in terms of welfare of the uh, lecturers. And I also would like for you to share details of what kind of update you have on the current Student Loan Act. You know, uh, you know it's a, a financial uh, burden on students and parents. Uh, you know, it remains really rife at this moment. I'd like, to, I'd like for you to highlight all of that, if you can. Okay, if I can start with your first one. Uh, in terms of negotiation, the International Labour Organization have prescribed, uh, there are fundamental conventions of the ILO uh, that uh, uh, prescribed the way negotiations go. However, in the event of a breakdown of negotiations, meaning there are no agreements between the two parties involving the unions representing the workers 
and on one hand, the government or rather the employer, we do not believe strike is the option. That is what Kona believes. We believe that if at the end of the day, negotiations broke down completely, why shouldn't unions try the option of going to court? For example, the last uh, strike was eventually resolved in the court. The prolonged strike uh, period of about eight months did not resolve the, the issue. So that tells you strikes can only be more destructive than constructive. So at the end of the day, it was the courts that resolved it. Whatever issue it is, we believe, can be tested in the courts if negotiations will break down completely, rather than bring down the entire roof over Nigerians' heads, we can try the options of going to court to claim our rights. That is one aspect that uh, I've never seen uh, particularly academic staff uh, taking as an option. But we believe that is on the table for us to uh, actually look at, rather than take the option of strike. And uh, your other question uh, regarding university autonomy, how we view it, we believe that these universities are owned by the federal government of Nigeria. So it is the entire responsibility of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to fund these universities. However, we also look at it that universities are unique in their makeup. And so granting some levels of autonomy to it will enhance the way we do operate. You can understand now that government has granted almost uh, completely uh, the power to appoint vice chancellors to the university uh, council and university senate. So government has now removed its hands in who becomes vice chancellors in Nigerian universities. However, we need more uh, autonomy within the system. But it is still debatable within the system that that autonomy doesn't mean financial autonomy. If it's financial autonomy, then some aspects of tuition will have to be included. And if you will include tuition within uh, public universities, then that's an entirely different uh, ball game that uh, we will be discussing because Nigerian students, Nigerian parents, even the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that uh, guarantees uh, access to education uh, needs to be uh, interrogated. So uh, the issue of um, total autonomy to universities, I think, is uh, still debatable, but it is clear. Government alone cannot fund these universities. You can see the present global economy does not warrant uh, government taking everything on its shoulders. That is why the little thing that government is doing is not enough. And then we're ending up, uh, people saying that we're ending up producing half-baked graduates because we have to make do with the little uh, investments that government has done within the system in laboratories and the rest of it. And most essentially, the poor salaries and wages of our university staff. So we believe uh, our government should do more to uh, bring in more funding in the system. But uh, financial autonomy actually is a different thing. Uh, if you increase uh, the tuition, then the universities, will, I mean, the, the students will not like it. Parents will not like it. However, we as workers, uh, we are on the side of uh, ordinary Nigerians and also we are on the side of, of our own members. All right, uh, Dr. Esiaku, uh, just before we let you go very quickly, uh, I'd like you to clarify uh, uh, for us uh, if what you meant by uh, the seven and a half months is to, uh, is that you are asking your members who are affected uh, to disregard the waiver from President Bola Metinubu uh, for, you know, as far as the four months waiver is concerned, uh, while you work on uh, a different route to get the entire seven and a half months paid? Or are you saying that collect this while we work on getting the remaining three and a half months? Just clarify for us what that means. You see, fundamentally, our members were not on strike during the eight months that the universities were closed down. So the no work, no pay policy that was uh, being uh, meted out on striking members, we believe 
uh, our members have been victimized by it. So the section 43, subsection uh, A2 of the Trade Disputes Act stated that if workers are being locked out of their place of work, then they are entitled to their wages. So we are capitalizing on that section of the Trade Dispute Act to reclaim the entire backlog for our members because we believe we did not declare strike. We didn't go on strike. Federal Republic of Nigeria, I mean, the Nigerian government knows that even when the strike was called, we were not part of it because we were not members of the union that uh, called the strike. And we were basically being locked out of the system because even when the academic staff union called the strike, other unions too within the system, the SANU, the, the NASU, and the NAT also called strike. So we have, we, our members had to leave the, uh, the campuses because students were asked to vacate. Since then, we have been calling on government, we have been doing press conferences, we have been engaging with the Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Education to inform them that our members were unjustly being victimized by the no work, no pay. And you can see that even at the end of the day, the issue of the no work, no pay policy was decided by the courts of law. The, the policy was validated by the industrial court and also by the court of appeal that the no work, no pay is for striking members. So we believe those two judgments alone have uh, actually show that our members have nothing to do with it. So we are insisting that our members should disregard this uh, circular because even within the body of circular itself, the name of Konwa has not been mentioned. And the circular mentioned that the president wants to give amnesty to unions that went on strike. So mm. we believe Konwa didn't go on strike. Uh, this uh, uh, circular, uh, I mean, has nothing to do with us. And we are pursuing, we are pursuing our own course accordingly. We are engaging with the Ministry of Labor, we are engaging with the Ministry of Education, and we are having a very positive response. And we believe that our members, corner members will be paid in full in the due course of time. All right, Dr. Aminu Abdullahi Isiaku, a National Liaison Officer of the Congress of University Academics, we want to thank you for joining us on The Morning Show today.